Hey there, Miriam Shulman here. Welcome to today's Facebook Live. We're talking about everything you need to know about painting watercolor pets. So I wanted to hear, see who's here with me live. So if you can share just in the chat. Hey, Miriam, I can hear you all the way from California, Canada, Australia, wherever it is you are in the world. Just put it below in the chat box. Okay, so once I get the heads up that you can hear me, I will move ahead and it looks like you can. So I am gonna go ahead. All right. Hello, everybody. Who here has painted in watercolors before? I would love to hear from you. Just share your experience right below in the comments. And since there's a delay between when I ask a question and you answer it, I'm going to skip ahead, but I am going to come back and take a look at what you have to say. So here's how you know if you're in the right place. You love the look of watercolor, but maybe you don't know how to get started. You're overwhelmed by supplies and want to learn the most essential ones. You've been painting in watercolors for a while, but want to discover the colors I use every day for getting the best results. And you'll learn the number one paint color. You need to paint watercolors. This is a must. Plus my favorite brands and how to stretch your supplies to maximize your budget. And the complete yet succinct shopping list of exactly what you need, no more, no less. So real quick, in case you ha we haven't met, I'm Miriam Shulman. My art has been seen in all these places and I'm the founder of The Inspiration Place. But like many of you, I did not go to art school and most art schools don't really teach watercolor anyway. I started off in a continuing education class at night while I worked during the day. This was before the internet. And many of my first attempts were pretty muddy. In fact, they were pretty bad. But if you want to be a good watercolor artist, you have to be willing to be a bad watercolor artist first. Since then, I've become obsessed with watercolor. I've read all I can. I took classes on the side while raising my family, and I've completed countless numbers of commissioned portraits of pets and children. Hey, but what I'm most proud of is helping people just like you pass on my knowledge and techniques to my students, beginning and emerging artists, real people just like you. And I love sharing what I know through free tutorials like these and also through my classes, which is why we're talking all about watercolor supplies today. So who is excited to get started? Oh, I see lots of people here. Mickey all the way from Denver and Catherine's in the house. DK's in the house. So nice to see you guys. All right. So if you're real excited about today's topic, give me a thumbs up. You can hit the emoji or a heart or just like tell me how you're feeling about today's topic in the comments. Moving ahead. I'm always getting asked what brands of paint I prefer. So I'm going to share that first. So Windsor Newton is one of my favorites as the best colors. And Holbein is a close second because the paint stays moist the longest. I also love Daniel Smith, but not as much as the other two. Mostly I prefer their specialty colors, which like quinacridone gold. And let's talk about tubes versus pan paint. So pans are easier to travel with, but if you really want bright watercolors, rich colors, then you want to stick to tubes. The richest colors do come from using tube paints. Think of it like orange juice. Freshly squeezed is always going to be the best. And then to keep your paints moist, you want to invest in a palette. This is about a $25 item on Amazon. It makes the paint last longer. And you just keep squeezing out fresh paint on top and use a spray bottle to re-moisten paints. Unlike acrylic paints, watercolors you can use over and over again. And in terms of brushes, you really just need two or three rounds, a big one and a small one. Don't get the most expensive ones out there. Like Sable is very expensive. They are better, but you don't need to get the very, very best. What I like actually is a synthetic and natural blend. So it's like the nice sweet spot between a good price and good quality. 
And here are your must-have callers. Am I going too fast? I know I talk, I'm a New Yorker and I talk really, really fast, but just so good news for those of you who are watching here live, when I'm done, you can always watch this again and pause the video and take lots of notes. Hey, Becky, nice to see you here. Okay, so here are the must-have colors. There are two that you absolutely have to have, burnt sienna and cobalt blue. You can pretty much paint almost anything you want with just those two colors alone. But if you want to get a little more imaginative and go further, here is the complete color list I recommend. So burnt sienna, a variety of yellows, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, quinacridone gold. Those are ones I love. And blues, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, beautiful blues. They each have their purposes. And then reds, cadmium red for sure. But then you also want a pink because watercolor, unlike acrylic paint, you the only way you get pink is to start with a pink pigment. You can't really mix white in, with red to get pink. And then for green, phthalo green is really great. Um, but if you're doing the pet portrait class, you don't need that particular green. Really, any green will do. And then here's some extra stuff you need if you're getting started with watercolors. And, and don't worry, we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A about everything I'm talking about today. You want a number two pencil. My favorite is Papermate's mechanical pencil because it's super cheap. And a gray kneaded eraser. And then a blade like an X-Acto knife or a packing knife is really good for scratching out uh, details. Now, if you're doubting whether watercolor is going to work for you, I want to share art done by my students. So these are art done by students at the Inspiration Place, people who took my Pet Portrait Academy classes, my Crazy Cats or my Dog Days classes. So these are artists who all started off in the same place. They're beginners. They're not professionals. And look at their amazing results. Some of them went on to build a pet portrait painting business, but they started off in the same place as many as, as you. Okay, so now I'm going to just peek at the comments and you guys had a chance to catch up with me. Who's excited to start painting pets now? Let me know in the chat if you're super excited because I have some additional free training for you. And I just want to make sure that everyone here gets a chance to, to do that. So let me go ahead and tell you about it. If you want to go a little deeper, I have a free training for you. I invite you to watch the masterclass replay. Turn your passion for pets into perfect portraits with the Shulman art process. If you want to get that, all you have to do is go to shulmanart.com forward slash replay. You'll discover how to use techniques for painting fur that look soft and natural, explore how to choose and blend colors that beautifully match your real life fur babies, and learn the shape method for drawing pets that help you easily sketch even if you think you can't draw. And the best part is you'll get to watch the demonstration live to see these principles. Actually, it won't be live. It's a replay. So sorry, I shouldn't have said live. Um, you'll get to watch the, a demonstration to see those principles put into action. So to sign up for the free masterclass replay, go to shulmanart.com forward slash replay. And here's how you sign up. When you go to that page, all you have to do is enter your email and your name, and it'll take you directly to the page. I think it also emails it to you just in case you can't watch it right away. It's only available, though, until November 18th. So depending on when you're watching this, I'm, I'm going live on November 12th. You have six days to take advantage. It's about an hour long, the class. Um, oh, yeah. So the link uh, to the video will also be emailed to you in case you need to watch it later. However, it will only be available, like I said, through November 18th. It doesn't cost anything. It's totally free. But at the end, I will invite you to enjoy Pet Portrait, join Pet Portrait Academy, and I'll be sharing all the details about that class during the masterclass as well. Okay, so I'm going to be answering your questions about watercolors or any of my programs during our Q&A. Let's do that right now. So um, Anna's going to help me out by gathering up any questions that you might have. Um, we have at least a few dozen people here with me live. 
So let me just peek and see if there's any questions. And if there aren't any questions here live, I'm going to just let you know what some of the most frequently asked questions are anyway. So, okay, I'm not seeing any live questions right now, so I'm going to answer what I what's, I know some people might be thinking who are watching the replay who don't have a chance to ask me their question live. Okay, so usually I get asked, will my techniques, I got asked this every single one of the four masterclasses, by the way, that I did, will my techniques work for acrylic paint? And the truth is, although you could take uh, something like fluid acrylics, those are very similar to watercolor and, um, you know, dilute that with some medium. Really, the methods that I'm using are best for watercolor. It is a watercolor technique, what I'm doing inside the masterclass, what I do inside my other classes. But you may find, if you're an acrylic painter and you find that you're very tight, there are a lot of students who come to me who had only painted in acrylics and oils, like my student, Jan Burner. She had only play, painted acrylic and oils. And when she started painting in watercolor, it really helped her loosen up and get free. So if you're struggling to get loose with your acrylic painting, then just experimenting with watercolor could really help you with that. And when you loosen up with your art, it really really helps you loosen up with your life and release some stress. I know a lot of us can use some stress release at this time. Okay, so that's uh, one of the questions. Um, okay, so Diana wants to know, are there certain brands that don't blend well? Okay, so a lot of people love to ask me questions about brands that I don't try. I'm going to tell you about the brands I have tried and haven't tried that I like and dislike. I've seen so many students try the Reeves brand. I believe that's Michael's um, generic brand. It may not be by Michael's, but there's this very cheap brand by Reeves. It's horrible, horrible. If you have it and you're struggling with watercolor paint, painting, that's why I just throw them out. The other ones that are not so good are the student grade. So Cotman. Um, it kind of comes out like the consistency of toothpaste. And I also, I know some watercolor artists like Daniel Smith, but I find that unless it's one of the specialty colors, I feel the same way about Daniel Smith as Cotman. I feel that it's a very toothpaste type of consistency, whereas the Windsor Newton, the Holbein, it comes out more like a soft butter, like a room temperature butter, which makes it much easier to paint. So I recommend getting high the best paint you can afford artist grade paint either Windsor Newton or Holbein for those reasons and it's it, those are the ones I use I haven't tried anything outside of those brands the Reeves I didn't try myself but I have students who would come to me to my in-person New York classes and the ones who would bring the Reeves paint and their results were just horrible and then once they switch to the Windsor Newton their art paintings improved like that. It was amazing how much better their painting got just from switching the brand. So that's a really great question, Diane. I'm so glad you asked that. Okay. So I am not seeing any more live questions here about watercolor. Um, one thing I went over very quickly, and this is a frequently asked question, is you'll see if you go to watch the, the, the masterclass. And by the way, the masterclass, you know what, I really should change what it says below here, because it just is the replay. I don't mean the replay of this. I mean the replay of the, the masterclass about learning how to paint pets. So inside that one, people ask me, well, what are you what are you using to draw with? What is that? And is it a special pencil? And I actually don't use a special art pencil. My favorite pencil is, and I'm looking to see if I actually have one on the counter. My favorite pencil is actually a paper mate. So it's the kind you get in an office supply store. It's a mechanical pencil. So it all you don't have to worry about stopping and sharpening it. It stays super sharp. Um, the main thing is you don't want to use the eraser that comes with the Papermate pencil. So when you get the Papermate pencil, 
rip that eraser off that pink thing so you don't forget and accidentally use it because it will mark up your paper so what you want to use instead and i can't remember if this is in the supplies i just covered no i, I think it is what you want to use instead is a gray kneaded eraser or a mars a white mars eraser or even a combination of the two though you want to stick to just those art erasers for a for erasing your pencil. The other thing that I get asked a lot, and we didn't talk about this here. So like, I, I'm just making up questions that I know people have. These are like the questions that you, you don't, don't even think to ask. And that is, what do you do about the pencil lines? And I strongly believe that you should allow your pencil lines to show. It's part of the artwork. John Singer Sargent always included his pencil lines. Okay, I'm going to peek if there's any live questions. And if there isn't, I'm going to say saranara to everybody. But thank you so much for showing up here live. And for those of you who are on the replay, thanks for joining me here tonight. And I hope you get to check out my pet painting masterclass. To watch that, go to shulmanart.com forward slash replay. All right, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Bye.